Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Now, solid principles are one of those things that every developer has heard of, but few fully understand. If you use an object-oriented language, then being familiar with these principles will help you write better code. Principles such as the single responsibility principle are fairly self-explanatory, whereas the Liskov substitution principle requires a bit more mental effort to get your head around. Even those of you who think you know the solid principles well could probably do with a refresher. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a good understanding of the solid principles, even if you struggled to understand them before. The first is the single responsibility principle. This is one of the more simpler principles of solid. As the name suggests, your class should have a single responsibility. Giving a class multiple responsibilities means that when you do come to make a change, you're more likely to introduce bugs. A class should only really have one reason to change. So what does that look like in real life? Now let's say we're creating a teaching application where we're gonna have a student class. We could put all the functionality for the student into a class like this. This, however, quite clearly breaks the single responsibility principle. Our student class is responsible for storing student details, saving them to the database, sending them an email, as well as enrolling them in courses. So here we have multiple different reasons why we would need to change this code and therefore multiple ways that we could introduce bugs. On top of that, if we have multiple developers working on features for a student, then they'd all end up updating the same file. So we'd have a whole load of merge conflicts when they finish their work. So to fix this, we need to extract all those responsibilities into their own separate classes. This then has the added benefit of letting us reuse functionality without having to repeat the code in several places in our application. Even though this all seems quite simple, it is very easy to take this too far. Single responsibility doesn't mean that your class should do only one thing. It just means that everything it does should be very closely related so you don't end up with bloated classes. The second principle is the open close principle. Now this principle states that your code should be open to extension but closed to modification. If you need to add some additional functionality to your application, then you shouldn't be editing the existing classes or methods to do that. After all, you have spent ages writing unit tests for all of those methods, and therefore any changes you make now would cause them to break. On top of that, adding in additional functionality to existing methods may cause unexpected consequences wherever you end up calling that method from. So how do you go about adding additional functionality without changing the existing methods or classes? For these examples, I'm using c -sharp, but you'll need to check with your language documentation to see which ones are available to you. One way to achieve this is to use the decorator pattern. If you need to add some additional functionality either before or after your existing code, then this is one way to do that. Instead of modifying the code, we create a new class that implements the same interface. We can then call this new method without affecting the other code in our application. The benefit of this approach is that you can use dependency injection at runtime to be able to control when this new class is used. However, you can only use this approach if the method you want to extend is both public and included in the interface. Another great option is to use extension methods. Now extension methods can be used in both C-sharp and Kotlin as well as a few other languages. An extension method allows you to add a method to an existing class without actually having to change that file. Provided that you have the namespace for your extension imported, you can then use the method in the same way you would do if that method was part of the original class. The only downside of using extension methods is that unlike the decorator pattern, you can't switch at runtime when this code is used. There are many different ways that you can extend the functionality of your application without having to change the existing code, such as using inheritance or attributes. The next principle is the Liskov substitution principle. Now this principle is a little harder to understand. It states that a child class should be able to do everything that a parent class can. So let's say we have an actual parent class and it might be able to do things such as eat, sleep, go to work and make dinner. Then we have a child class that is inherited from that parent class. Now, obviously, as a child, there's some things they can't do, such as make dinner and go to work. This would therefore break the Liskov substitution principle because we can't use the child wherever we've used the parent in our code. To fix this, we'd have to create a human class and then have an adult and child class that would inherit from that instead. The next principle is the interface segregation principle. Now interfaces provide a contract that your classes need to implement. If you have particularly bulky interfaces, then your classes are forced to implement methods they might not end up using. If you've ever used the repository pattern, you might have come across this before. With this pattern, you end up writing an interface that looks a bit like this. Now, every time you end up using this interface, you need to write an implementation for each of those methods, even if you don't plan on using them. If you didn't want to implement any of these methods, you could of course throw a not implemented exception, but that would then break the Liskov substitution principle as well. 
To overcome this, you can split the methods into different interfaces. You might have one for writing, one for reading, and one for deleting. When you do need to use all of the different methods, you could always create a main interface that inherits from all the others. This way, you only need to implement the methods that you're actually going to use, and you don't need to worry about calling some code that hasn't been implemented yet. The last principle of solid is dependency inversion, which states that high level modules shouldn't depend on low level modules. They should both depend on an abstraction. For example, if you had a service class and you wanted to save something to a database, you could create an instance of the repository class directly inside your service. But now your service is dependent on a lower level component. To overcome this, we create an interface for our repository and then we inject an instance of the repository into that class via the constructor. Now both the high level and low level modules depend on an abstraction, which in this case is the interface. The service doesn't need to know which repository it's using or how it works. It just cares that it meets the specifications of the repository interface. With all software principles, it's important to understand that they're not rules that you have to obey. They're just there to help you write better code. For example, you can take interface segregation too far and end up having just one method per interface, even if you need to use all of them. Or the requirements could change and instead of modifying the old code, you extend it, leaving the old code behind that just never gets used. Dependency inversion is really good in principle, but in most cases, you're just gonna have one class implementing an interface. Being able to swap out one database with another one using the same interface is a nice idea, but how often have you actually needed to do that? The real benefit of using interfaces is it makes everything a lot easier to test because you can just inject a mock whenever you're doing your testing. To be honest, the solid principles are in some ways too vague to be useful. You can follow the solid principles to the letter and still end up writing bad code. As always, the best advice when you're writing your code is to keep it simple. There is another coding principle called Cupid, which tries to overcome some of the shortfalls of solid, and I'll try and cover that in a future video. Thank you for watching, and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.